uh, how long is it you've actually worked here at the Express then? 25 years, man and boy. Well, you must have had some experiences then over the years. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember your first job? Yeah, that was South Africa, 1985. My first serious foreign assignment. If they'd known how serious things were going to get, they'd have sent someone older. Someone like Stevenson. He was there. That Fleet Street legend. Pistol cynic. I hated him. When the worst started, there were 12 of us in a hotel television lounge, all sending out the most fantastic stuff. A dozen of us yelling down the only three phone lines. Runners coming in with eyewitnesses. The 14-year-old boy dripping blood all over my word process. Refused to go and watch. Wanted to tell us, wanted us to tell. The din, the adrenaline. You've never felt anything like it. And four days later, the lines were down. Metaphorically, I mean. Everything was denoticed. We carried on collecting, piling it up. Enough material to fill a dozen colour supplements, let alone the actual news. And no way to pass it out. Without the fear of actual arrest, and we have the evidence of actual torture. I was desperate to get my stuff out. A few days later, the television lounge ground to a halt. All these so-called foreign correspondents sitting around drinking coffee. The only topic of conversation seemed to be where to get your laundry done. Stevenson sat there. He could see I was frustrated. Put down his glass and he said, do you hear that noise? What noise, I said. It was silent as the grave. The silence, he said. Do you know what that silence is? No, I said. Genocide, he said. The silence is genocide. Oh, it was a good line. Tight, perceptive, emotive. It had the desired effect on me. I exploded in a torrent of righteous indignation. Dare we all just fucking sit there? We're the voice of these people. They rely on us to break the silence. Stevenson nodded and passed me the phone. We'd been forbidden to ask for an outside line and we both knew that I could be arrested. Silenced. And I didn't have the courage to pick up that phone. I knew that at that moment my life had just been rhetoric. Whatever I said or believed, or said I believed, they were just words. I was what mattered. The most important thing in my life 